This is weird. Hey, Will, it's Torclair. Stop saying that in chat. I don't like it. How do I know you're saying it? Well, I know because I'm omnipresent and I'm always here watching you. So just be worried out. But hi, everybody. We're not actually here. This is past us talking to future you. So surprise. I know, right? This is obviously the holiday special while we're on holiday for you guys. And by holiday special, I mean this is our picks for game of the year and all the other fun stuff. So it's pretty interesting. So we decided instead of taking a week off and leaving you guys with absolutely nothing, because I know you'd be heartbroken and upset, and we really do love you guys, we would give you a fun little show. So obviously, there's it's me, not Lard Team Maker, but James, joined by Will. Hello. Dougie. Hello. And Carl. Hello. <clears throat> So we got a very uh, got a we wanted to go big and different. So it's a lot of differing opinions, a lot of different going on here. Uh, also, I believe Chris is MIA and knackered, so we'll get his opinions later on. Maybe he might bust in, he might not. We never know. That's the beauty of also doing the show live, but not live. But hell. So what do we have on tap for you today? Uh, there's no random bollocks though there probably will be uh there's no what we've been playing though technically it is what we've been playing uh essentially what you're going to get is is uh, a couple of categories from us we've 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 compiled lists most of us have compiled most of our lists uh for multiple categories uh them being indie game best of the year uh sports game best of the year rpg of the year action adventure which can include shooters because broad Biggest Disappointment, and then Game of the Year. <clears throat> Followed up by two honorable mentions of things that we wanted to mention. So essentially, that's what we're giving to you guys today. For you to discuss and chat, talk about and chat. Hey, Mr. Smith, I said stop saying that. Alright? I got, I'm looking at you. So, discuss, talk about, and then when we come back with the week after, we can all discuss this as a group and, sh and you know, and agree that I'm right, as always, and... We can move on with our lives. Hey, well, <laughs> I'm the one who edits. I'm always right. Ah, shit. <laughs> if need Damn. be, I have I have overarching privilege. I don't use it, but if I need to use it, I have the veto power. He has the power. I have the power. I do have I'm a He-Man shirt. I'm just I just decided not to wear it. So. Uh, how's everybody's holiday been so far? Best Christmas ever. It, yeah. It's, it's been nice, you know. Sleeping in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Eating of the food has been, yeah, been wonderful. Yep. I can imagine. So many presents. <sighs> I'm not so many, so many presents I opened early. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're calling loot boxes now? Is that how they're going to get away with calling it that? Presents? Not That's Seasonal win. presents. Seasonal okay, presents. Yeah. Presents. Presents. It's, it, it's, and it's not like you're buying them. We're just, you're giving us money. And then for a completely opposite transaction, we're giving you a present. Yeah. Hence, no monetary value. <laughs> that you may or may not want. Mm hmm. But then it's double tough. But then you can regift that present if you don't want it. Well, we are kind of giving people a present early, aren't we? I mean, we're, we're the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, because the gift won't give itself. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> nice. So you did there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we have so many puns on this name at this point. I've, I've just keeps they just keep coming hot and fast <laughs> moving on that's what <laughs> <I> said <laughs> I was so waiting for <laughs> yeah i was like being afraid it's christmas time yeah so hopefully you all enjoyed the holidays and you are having a good holiday uh like i said we wanted to do something special by or away that wasn't just cards against humanity uh as much fun as we have doing that um I figured this would be kind of fun and more interesting, and we'd at least be able to start a conversation and come back and talk to all you guys about it back on the live show when we're back. So, I think we'll get it started. We'll, we'll, we'll let's let's get this up and running, and we're gonna go and start off with our first category, 
uh, of indie game of the year for all of us. Now, I know my pick, but I think we'll start with my compatriot here, Will, on my left. You're right. Right. Uh, so my pick is is one that kind of fell off the radar for me a little bit because, you know, when, you, when you've played a game, multiple games during the year, you tend to let stuff just fall out of your head. And this one was a surprise hit. I mean, this was one that in 2017 I played at EGX. Uh, I was speaking to one of the, the people for it from Team 17. And it is Yoku's Island Express. Ooh. The pinball platform puzzle game. Uh, because, you know, you play like this little little bug, the dung beetle thing, and you, ha- you roll the ball about and you have to deliver things. You like become the island's postman and try to save the island and the big sort of god thing that's in there because it's been struck down and, and hurt. So you need to save it. And it's such a joyful game. It's so nice. It's one of those games where even if you're in a bad mood and you think, oh, bugger, I'm just going to put something on to just take my mood out on. You put that on and you just, half hour later, you're just really nice. You just feel really calm. And it, it's great. It's a game I've been meaning to play all year, mate, and I haven't jumped on it yet. Definitely keeping an eye on it for on sale. So you, you rate it that highly? I really do. I really do. There, there has been some crackers in the indie section this year, but that is what one that I really wanted to play through. I really wanted to complete quite quickly. I did it in what? Maybe about three or four days worth of play. Mm. And there are little bits you can go back to after you complete the main story, but it, it's kind it's fairly open worldish. I mean, you can see where you need to go. You may need to open up some bits along the way to get to the further. The, there's other parts of the island later on, but yeah, it's it's something that will keep you going for a little bit. How about yourself, Carl? Nice. Um, oh, the ones I have played for me, it's got to be Dead Cells. It's just just ace man, just absolutely brilliant. It's so well done. And not yourself, played it last year. Um, had a little bash on Steam, and it was one of the things that's in early access. Like, is it going to be any good when it comes out on console? And happy to say that you know it, it's it's just a superb uh, Metroidvania, you know, roguelike game. Uh, it, it's ex- exceptionally well done. Uh, studio uh, Motion Twin, a little, just a tiny little operation, really. And I've been working on it. I put a lot of effort into this game. It's it's very polished and very hard. You know, it is it is a toughie, but it's it's one of those that just it, it is addictive. It's it's paced well enough. It keeps you going back, and uh, just the design of it, the, you know, this kind of sixteen bit graphic, the aesthetic is just superb. And yeah, it's addictive as all hell, man. I still haven't finished it. I keep getting to the uh, the door of the final boss and getting killed um, pretty much around there. So um, it isn't easy. But, um, but yeah, just a superb game for me. And um, I- I've got it on the PS4, and I'm probably going to try and grab it as a physical edition on the Switch as well, man, just to have it on the shelf because it-, it is excellent. I was going to say, did you try it on like a PC version of it? Because I know on the t- if you stream it on Twitch and you have the PC version, you can have it be an interactive where someone can basically, in a, in a very broad sense, be a co-op. There's like a little thing flying around and trying to help you and heal you up. And they you can, can have interactive interactivity where they can vote for whether to help you or hinder you. Yeah, they can they Ooh. can vote like what the enemies are, what the next room will have poison or not, you know, that those kind of interesting elements. That's awesome. No, I haven't said uh, the, the build I played was these uh, super early and it's changed a lot since then. Um but it's one of those things that they just yeah labor love for them. But that sounds cool. I, I haven't bought it on PC yet, so I might have to <laughs> jump in and pick it up again. But I, I could play this game. It's one of my just go-to games. A palate cleanser, if you like. You know, I mean, you, you, we've had so many great games this year, and that's been one I've just constantly gone back to and just you know, a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there. Yeah, superb little game. Dougie, um, one of, was one of sort of my favourite ones because. Um... Is a game called Moss on PlayStation ah. VR. Yeah, 
Um, it's moved from Tannenberg. I'm not sure how big or small a studio is. It's but... I would consider VR to be an indie category. If you're not like the Resident Evils or a major company, that's that's kind of yeah. new blazing new ground. I think that we would consider that to be indie category. Uh, yeah. Basically, it's a story. Um, you're like, uh, we start off. You're sitting in a, you're like this a story, <clears throat> not teller, but you're you're uh, interacting with a, a magical book. And then it, it kind of takes you into the, the world of Moss when he's a little mouse. <coughs> it's sort of like a puzzle thing. You've got to, and the, their lands are being uh, slowly destroyed by uh, an evil force. And it's uh, sort of taking the adventure. So you're actually in the game as well. It's as a platformer, um, but you're, you're helping the little mouse uh, through his journey so you can move things and um if there's something coming at him then you can maybe possibly hold them back while he while you're controlling the mouse but also he kind of works independently as well so he you know he sees you as a, like a it looks like a was it a studio ghibli type mask is it's the you know the film you know the the film style yeah, yeah. The, uh the, 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 i'm guessing the kokori mask well, from yeah uh, well, yeah from yeah Mononoke. when you when you look yeah when you look into you can like there's some some spots where you can see yourself like if you're looking at yourself a reflection in the in the water um but the but there used to be mouse that sort of like knows you're there and uh knows that you're helping them as well so it's it's kind of cool and it's a um it definitely takes in you know because it's you know you anywhere you look it's it's all there for you to see so it's like you're well immersed inside this uh um this world that uh, Moss inhabits. That's uh, sort of my indie one so far. That's definitely the one. I guess it's on to me now. Uh, my indie uh, game is Into the Breach, which is done by Subset Games, who are the guys who made FTL. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a beautiful game. They went from kind of... For, I imagine most of us have played or have seen FTL played. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They made a grid-based strategy game with another wonderful soundtrack that has roguelike elements that lets you, because you're going through different timelines trying to save Earth, save a, pl a pilot from that timeline, use different ships, different tactics, and then once you've kind of beaten it with a enough ships, you can start making your own ships and developing your own tactics. And as you complete challenges with groups and ships... It gives you unlock points to unlock more groups and more ships. But then you can also pull on pilots and level up those pilots and get different specific skills that synchronize well with ships. And it's just a beautiful game. Um, right at that price point of like 20 bucks. So, but like subset mm -hmm. games knows their genre. And the fact that they went and they like hard pivoted to something completely different with a cool pixelized art style, a wonderful soundtrack, and just interesting and intuitive gameplay. Like, Damage and stuff is repaired between missions, and the enemies pop up from the ground. But if you have something over the, the where the enemy's supposed to pop up, it won't come up, and it'll essentially kill the enemy. So you can like, if I park my tank there, I'll take a damage, but the enemy won't come up, so I won't have to deal with an enemy. Or if I move, because moving enemies around, you have weapons that can push and pull and move stuff around or freeze in place. You now if you push an enemy onto a tile and that enemy comes up it can't come up it damages your enemy that you've already got and it kills the enemy underneath so there's a lot of kind of like movement strategy and bait working on a grid based system be certain ones where like the grid is falling away and turning into water and you have to like move or like adjust it as it falls away and then you can knock people off the edge of the water and kill them it's it's inter it's very interesting i would really strongly suggest picking it up because subset games they do great work when it comes to their indie titles, and they've only made two. And I've gotten a lot of time out of FTL, and I've put a decent amount of time into this one too. Nice. nice. So that's my pick for indie game of the year. Now we're on to sports. 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 Yes. So, who feels strongly about this category? Because I know mine, but mine's very quick and very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be a manager of some sort? Yes, I, I believe game? it. Yeah, you really, it's Football Manager 19. I bought it beginning in November. I have 60 hours into the game. 
Nice. Do I need to say anymore? It's not surprising, really, is it? It really isn't, considering how it's much It's the you sequel put into to Football years. Manager 18. I put 880 hours into Football Manager 18. Man. It's, it, it is <coughs> not, but that, that game can suck the hours up. I was saying to you before we, before we went live that the last one I played was 2014, and mm-hmm. it's probably about time to jump back in. But even though I didn't think I'd played it that much, just when I looked at Steam earlier on, it said, oh, 72 hours, wasn't it? I play 72 hours of football manager. I certainly don't remember it, but uh, yeah, so it, I think I'm it's gonna grab the it. perfect game to play while you're doing something else, yeah. Because, like, you really, really like if you focus on the tactic, you get it, but once the game's going and we're in between matches, you're kind of like you know, you can go off and do something else and then pull it back up. It's a perfect game to watch while you're playing football, while you're watching football, you can play football manager. There have been mm-hmm. plenty of times where on this screen I have the uh, the premier, the prem on. And this city I have the on football on and my girlfriend will come and go, So which one are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like technically neither? <laughs> All I'm doing is pressing space. <laughs> Pretty much. How do you win at football manager? <laughs> press space bar. Then spend a lot of money on play on youth players and then press space bar some more. Yeah. So yeah. My sports game of the year is gonna be football manager nineteen. Still early on into it, but I know I'm gonna get a ton of playtime out of it. They're they're only improving what it's what the game does too. Adding hierarchy. They revamped the training system now. They have mentoring groups. So as you have your youth players come in, it behooves you to have older players to mentor those younger players to help them build up their skills and get the right personalities so you can build the squad the way you want to. They add hierarchies in so now more influential players have more say. And that makes the locker room atmosphere a thing where, you know, somebody's upset. You can actually have somebody who's more influential talk to them and they'll listen to them and actually come back into the fold. Um, they've done a lot of great stuff. Also, Brexit is a thing in it, too. Like they, <laughs> when, when the game has coded like six different ways for Brexit to go. I'm a fan. So, yeah, that's my sports game. <laughs> 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 I, it, I, they they limit the amount of foreign players you can have in the squad, which is what they were going to do anyways, and they limit the loans, which they were going to do anyways. I think my favorite one I had was it basically said nothing changes, but because of the because of sanctions on Qatar, they moved the World Cup to uh, Australia. <laughs> like that was like that's coded into the game. <laughs> like yeah, that's like due to due to economic sanctions. Um, and I just love some of this because they have injuries now, and I I love two of the injuries one of my players got because I started I started a save and I was playing a non league side, so I was really actually playing just they were a semi pro side, and one of the guys got food poisoning <laughs> and couldn't train for three days. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bravo, bravo. The other guy didn't get food poisoning, but he got banned for match fixing. And got kicked out of the league. <laughs> I'm the, I swear you not. The guy was the guy because he, he scored an own goal against my own team, and they apparently the FA said that he did that because he was a semi pro player and he was gambling on the match, and they oh, kicked God. him out of the game. I couldn't <laughs> sign him anymore. I'm like, this is really weird. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, this is, I'm like, is this is real life because, you know. A non-league side has one guy get food poisoning because he went out to the pub and ate the wrong kind of chips, and then another guy gets cut for match fixing and gambling. Okay, bravo, football manager team. You you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's ice, man. That's yeah. ice. So, yeah, but that's my sports game of the year. Who's who wants to go next? Who's interested in this? Well, mine will be really quick because I'm not really. A- this for 2018. I don't think I've bought a sports game. I've I, I played I played FIFA. Okay, doesn't have to I was be. Like, your... I've got the I got like the, the EA access, so they got 10 hours of the. So I started playing the story mode again. I quite I, I quite liked that. Uh, but then there's a game I got given by the the devs to stream, which was called Descenders, which is like a mountain bike challenge game so hmm. it's uh you you yeah it's first well you can even have it in first person or third person and it's uh um uh, you're basically going down a mountain and not don't die but then there's lots of uh things in your way 
Uh, that'd probably be the the best one, I think. Yeah, street uh, sports had work. Yeah, uh, and the other one was a VR game I got from Keymailer called Catch and Release, and it was a. Um, Is it a fishing, fishing game? game? If you want, to uh, it was it? it was it was fun. It was fun to play, but it's it. It needs it. It's bugged to hell. Like you, you know, you 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 turn your fishing rod, and your hand would go to try and pick it, and then your arm, you could see your arm just slowly drifting off into the distance. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so the. Uh, but isn't that the beauty of VR games, though? Is how ridiculous they are. Yeah, like you know, you throw your, you, you could turn on the radio. Uh, uh, like I said, I got you know, I think I got fifteen copyright. Claims on my YouTube video for playing it because the radio Those are stations. rookie numbers. Uh, <laughs> but but it was it was no songs that I'd ever heard of. I just thought it was part of the, you know the something that they'd made up for the game. And but but when you threw the the radio in the water, it, you could still hear it sort of muffled. <laughs> I'm glad that they <laughs> thought you, of that. Uh, but uh, it was quite a relaxed, chill thing because you could just sit and you know. Listen to the, you know, the, the sort of the, because you're basically in a, a big lake and, but you could row the boat anywhere you wanted to. So, you did you have beer side. in the boat? Uh, there was beer in the boat, yeah. So, you but, could technically yeah, you know, have, a, have beer a beer and like drink your virtual beer while you're drinking your actual beer. <laughs> Is that not the I most mean, immersive I mean... experience you can think of? <laughs> That's the best VR game ever. Exactly. And we have That's beer. one hell of a drinking game. Exactly. When, you, when yeah. your character drinks a beer, you drink, you, you drink a beer. <laughs> Honey, why are you drunk? I'm playing a video game. All right? I'm immersed. I a fish. Yeah. <laughs> I got a fish this side. <laughs> so then she'll look at you and just be like, That's, That's what she the... said. I was going to say, <laughs> your wife will look at you and be like, That's not the only thing you got this size. <laughs> yeah, tight in a game where time played says so like a hundred hours, but you only remember ten of them. They're the only one, they're the only sports type games I have played. It works. This year. We're broadening oh, the categories, broad strokes, broad strokes for categories. Yeah. <sighs> I think I'll wade in here, go go to the edge of the lake and get in a car and start driving around a cobbled together looking UK for my sports game of the year. As a no surprise, it's going to be Forza Horizon 4. Because it it doesn't take itself seriously. I mean, hell, you can drive Robin Reliance souped up for 200 miles an hour, try and get them to go around a corner, which, by the way, doesn't happen easily. Mm They will tip, they will fly, you can smack into each other and they will tumble. And But yeah, it, it is more of the same with Forza Horizon. I mean, the challenges that you get, the big showcase events, are very similar to ones in Forza Past. And, you know, you've got the train race, but this time, because it's in the UK, it's the Flying Scotsman. Which I can tie into this year because I actually saw that as a real thing earlier in the year. Where? It came through the town. Came through so our went, town was going by. Yeah, so we went down to the rail station. And went, oh, look, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you sit on the platform with an anorak and a thermos? <laughs> no, I wasn't going with no Important question. That's number one one zero seven <laughs> with a class B engine. Yeah, no, that's, didn't do that. yeah. <laughs> They're but using the wrong busy. stylized cars. Those ones came out in the 1850s, <laughs> not the 1800s. That's where it needed to be from. They are historically inaccurate. <laughs> bully, sir, bully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I just said. That's, you go, you go and witness things. You go experience it. So, yeah. so that was a nice little sort of link to Forza. Um, I mean, there is a downside to it. The downside is the online mode. And it's such a bugger at yeah. times to hook up, to get part of a convoy for it to work properly so you can have decent games. That's the only downside. But because... I think the, the menu best... system is shockingly poor as well. Oh, it is. It really is. And you, you have to find, you know... You have to go across like two bits to try and find whether someone's in 
online or not. And other times it just goes, oh, you can join now. Why didn't you do that before? <laughs> <laughs> I like the seasons. Um, you know, every week or so, or 10 days, I think it is, they change the seasons throughout it. So, you know, you, you get to experience at least, you know, if you decide to play it regularly, winter, which I suck at. I don't like driving in the, in the snow in the, in this. It's just horrible unless you get you get your buggies going along, or you know. But I do prefer like spring and summer because then you can get your proper centers out and just blitz them down down what looks to be the M one. <laughs> it's very destructive. As I say, it it's not really the M one though because you're not sitting there in gridlock. Mm. Uh, Going down well, to playing. one lane while, like, the, the road crew is sitting there in their protective vests eating their lunch. Yeah. When you can find them. <laughs> <laughs> they're very, <laughs> oh, yes, the very elusive road crew. <laughs> That's my choice. That is no, my there's choice. usually about six or seven, but they're, they're usually standing watching one person with a spade. Mm. That's the, yeah, that's, <laughs> union mandate. Yes, that's, that's union mandate. Supervisors. Spade on the top, but, but, but then, but then, if there was traffic like uh, roadworks anyway, you could just barrel through the barrel through a wall and go across country. Yeah, don't try that in real life. Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 your car will break before the wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, up to, to be fair, Will, I'm with you, mate. Uh, if you'd have asked, asked me a few months back, I probably have plumbed for a uh, super mega baseball too, which is really cool. A lot of fun, um, but I just think Forza Horizon 4 is probably the game, apart from a drunken night on FIFA here and there, the most fun I've had playing a video game, um, particularly a sports game. So, yeah, I think I've played playground games, just nailed it again. Yeah, the menus are pain online, getting people to race with together online, but if you just want to just have a beer, put your foot down and just race around, it's it's superb. It looks great. On the One X, it's superb. Like, you know, performance mode is just like... It still looks the, the bee's knees, you know. And yeah, I, I love the fact it's in the UK uh, and the season's most cool. Like you, I find myself sleeping all over the place in the winter, but um, it's still pretty. Uh, it, it's really nice. So yeah, it's just head and shoulders, I think, above a lot of other racing games uh, and, and stays, you know, stays in that position. The one thing that did impress me with Forza during the seasons is when, when it starts to go from winter towards spring did you see in edinburgh the way the, the roads changed the roads conditions slowly changed so there's not yeah. that much snow on the road there's not much frost on the road it starts to be cleared that's yeah. a nice little touch it's phased isn't it rather than just being like a cinematic yeah. or something you know it, yeah it's yeah it's it's nice yeah it's cool what's next james uh that would lead us to rpg Ah, role-playing game of the uh, year. Sweet. Who wants to jump in? Will's gone first once. I've gone first once. So <clears throat> I'm not an RPG player, so it's not one to go for. Do, do you have something that has RPG elements in the game? Yeah, but I think that's for give it a year. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spoiler. spoiler. Okay, I'll go first then. Why not? Um, <laughs> I am an RPG player, uh, but shockingly, shockingly, I have uh, the two biggest RPGs that I was going to play this year, which is Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, the, the DLC slash full game, and Thronebreaker, the Witcher uh, Chronicles. I've still got both of those to play, so I can't put them in this box. Um, my RPG of the year will be Nino Kuni 2, uh, okay. Revenant Kingdom, which is beautiful. It's a lot of fun. It's... A little bit different to the first game, you know. There's a, you've got a lot of parts of it which I thought I wouldn't enjoy. So you know, sort of the the commanding of your troops and 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 that, that the kind of mini game element to it. But it's it's just still so well done, man. Level five have done a great job with it, and it's uh, I was looking forward to it a ton. I, I still haven't finished it either, but uh, you know, how it's an RPG. Um, but I, I do find it. Very pretty, very well done. I don't get frustrated with it much, and I think you know, the whole collectible, the little higgledies and stuff, is is just is very cool. And, uh, and yeah, I've had a blast playing it. it it's it's <clears> just 
just balance well enough. I think you can play the game and, and just it never gets too tough. The battle system is a lot uh, more accessible. I think this time around with more like free free roaming combat and stuff, it feels uh yeah feels more more friendly to people. But um, I don't after playing the other two, I don't know whether it would be my favourite RPG of the year. But so far, uh, yeah, so far it would be. Nice. Uh, I'll go next and I'll jump in. Um, a game that again I had to be reminded of when we were talking about this during the meeting, and it's one that. I, I actually really, really enjoyed it that year, and it's the Adventure Pals. Oh, yeah. I heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I now, them. see, see, it's that recognition when you go, oh, yeah, that was out this year. It's January it's... 26th, if, we're, if we looked at it, just, just snuck in. So, you, you know, you play this little kid who, is his a grandpa that gets, that gets nicked from the, this, this, who, this guy who pretends to be your friend? And then just tries to nick people to just turn them into creatures for no other reason than he can. And so you go off with your backpack, which has a giraffe in it, which can of course fly like a helicopter across a number of levels to try and pick up, you know, all these items to basically get from A to B to win it. Um, the reason I say it's an RPG, <clears throat> it is very light on the RPG element but you can you know get other things like weapon upgrades you know uh health potions or, or gold you know more sort of gold bits and so that's that's why i put it into the rpg because it is it is there in the broad sense the yeah. word but it is yeah. it is a good good time remember broad strokes broad strokes with the categories yeah. here i would just say as well i forgot to mention i would also put monster hunter up there because it's got some RPG elements in there, and I love that game so much, but it doesn't quite fit in anywhere yeah. else because Nino Kuni 2 is a, fun, is a great RPG, um, and Monster has got those kind of, it has got some RPG characteristics too. Also, fucking great game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll go next to give Dougie a little bit more time. Uh, I'm going more down the traditional <laughs> route. Uh, my RPG of the year is Dragon Quest XI because ah. it came out on PC this year. And actually, because it's been out in Japan, but it was made its U.S. release. Um, it is quite essentially the um, the J. It is a JRPG, but I think it's 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 what makes it for me. It's the polish, much like with Nino Kuni, the polish on the game is superb. And I say this because it's a it's a dubbed game, and they went so far as that when they talk, even with the horrible accents that they have. The dub uh -huh. syncs up to the mouthing. So the mouths sync up to the words that they're saying, and it's not just like, let's just flappy model, mouth, you know, mouth these. So in the, in the verbal cutscenes, the dialogue matches with the, how the mouth is moving and saying. Mm -hmm. The gameplay is fun. It's traditional JRPG. It's probably the easiest of the Dragon Quest, so it's accessible. The story isn't as like it's like yes you are you are the luminary you're here to save the world from evil but the interesting and you'll learn this within probably playing the first hour of the game is that the the dark forces have actually made people believe that the luminary is actually evil so instead of it being like you're the chosen one and everybody's like oh my god you're the chosen one everybody's like you're the chosen one oh my god you're the reason why all this evil is coming in the world we need to fucking murder you so it takes that like you're the hero and turns it on its head a little bit and um, the characters are all kind of engaging. Like, your buddy who's a thief has, like, more motivation for just being a thief than, like, why, you know, oh, I just steal stuff. Why do you, and like, oh, we need to get the red over from the castle. Okay. And then, like, you know, go further down the line where I'm at now in the story about 30 hours in. You get the backstory on why he was getting the red orb from the castle about, like, what he was doing with it. And I'm like, okay, so this game plays the long game. You know, characters have each one of the characters have their motivation to help you. It, they all are have interesting stories where they're like they're they're kind of like the the original ones and you know the original kind of story, but they take a little twist on it. Um, also, one of the characters is flamboyantly gay. Just oh, super. Silvando is just like <laughs> out of control, and there's a sequence where <clears throat> you find him after a calamity, and he's running around with a bunch of merry men making music. And they have oh, this—they yeah. have this basically Mardi Gras stage that they carry, 
and they make you put on what's best described as a as a pe- as a peacock doublet. So it's a doublet with tights with peacock feathers at the back, and then you have to run with enemies around you to the nearest town, and all your character does is like wave back and forth like this the entire time as you're running into town. And and then it becomes an armor that you could wear, and whatever your character puts it on, it changes his appearance, and he does that. So you can go into town just doing that the entire time. Oh, that's superb. Uh, that is superb. It is. It is absolutely superb. Th- there's some very inter- there's some very hilarious moments in it as well. Um, my I explained this on the podcast a few a few weeks ago. But there's if anybody is familiar with Dragon uh, Dragon Quest games, they know about Puff Puff. Which is kind of like their version of like something erotic happening, uh, and usually women doing <laughs> yes. it to men, right? So there's this great scene where I'm, I'm I walk into this desert town and there's a, there's an attractive woman wearing what they would consider to be scantily clad in the game. She goes, "I'm told that we have one of the best puff puffs around. Would you like to come in?" And you go, the character goes, "Go." You can say yes or no. So you go, "Yes." So you start walking up the stairs. And then she's like, "Okay, we're almost at the room. Are you sure? You know, I can't. I'm mean, really excited. Are you?" You go, "Yes." So you go into the room. She's like, "Now lie down on the bed." And all of a sudden, it's just like it goes. You know, fades to black. It goes puff, 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 puff as the dialogue boxes, and it comes back in, and she's there. And then one of those characters, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, it's like the really hulking muscular guys that are wearing the masks with the horns on it. And it just has like a mask and, the, and like a, an O part for where the mouth is where you talk out of. He goes, yes, this is my dad. He gives the best puff puff around. <laughs> and so like you're sitting going like, oh, and like you, your character then walks back downstairs and all your friends are like sitting outside waiting for you. It's like. So how was it? Man, you look really exhausted. It must have been a good time. And your character just nods his head yes, and you all walk away. And it's just like... Yes, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and it's just like, um, if you'd never t- if you'd never talked to that NPC, it would have never happened. And you could just <coughs> run by it. But the fact that if you stop and you talk to like NPCs, shit like that happens all the time. And it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and there's an achievement for getting all the puff puffs in the game too so no way yeah no there's there's an in-game achievement for it so uh that's why it's 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 very traditional jrpg it's turn-based combat they also kind of make the battlefields an arena so if you want to you can actually move the characters around the arena but essentially you still like can attack and it's just still turn-based or you can turn it to a traditional camera and just make it like a normal rpg so they kind of gave you that action to make it feel like your characters are moving around to being awesome Mm -hmm. But essentially, it's still just a turn-based RPG, and that's why it's my oh, cool, game here. Man. Also, a Kari Toriyama art. That's sweet. Um, James, you're the, you're an RPG boy. Uh, yes. What uh, there's a game, there's a demo I played this year, and I picked the game up after it. Uh, Shining Resonance Refrain uh, on the PS4. It was released. It was, it's an old PS3 game, but it's Japanese only. Um, and it came out on Steam, Xbox, PS4 this year. I didn't know if you played it, mate, but it was one that. What is it called? I, Shining Resonance Refrain. It was Shining Resonance Refrain is the version <clears> of it that was released this year. But it's it, I, I picked it up. I haven't played through it yet. But the demo is really cool, and it's it's got a lot of these uh, warriors who've got like a dragon inside them. Um, and so and then you you've gone to play a dude, and he's got amnesia, and and he realizes he's like this all powerful, legendary dragon dude. But yeah, man, it it was really cool. It still looks a bit like a PS3 game, but what I played of the demo was really, really fun. So I grabbed it, but I haven't, I haven't played it. Yet, I haven't played I it yet either, but it is now on my wish list on Steam. Yeah, have a look, mate. If it, if it goes cheap, it's definitely it's more of an action RPG, but it's it, it's really fun. Mm-hmm. All right, Dougie, no pressure now. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, like I said, I don't know. RPGs have never, uh, I've never really been uh, my thing. I've always gone to go into. I'm, I'm more like a first person action shooter. Type game, uh, so I haven't really played about it. the the plus side. I, I, I do boomerang game rentals, which gives me, um, you know, I can pick games that I've never really tried before, and also because I do do the streaming, I, I get some games from Key Miller that I probably I, I basically said yes to anything that was coming coming my way, and I, there was a game. Um, it came out in February. I played about I played about two hours of it. Um, 
but I thoroughly I did enjoy it. Um, but it, it was an RPG, and it's basically the, the only like proper RPG that I've played. I did play a bit of Fallout Four because it came free in Game Pass this year, but because it's not really released this year. Do you know what I mean? Last year, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a couple of years. It ago. came. It came out in Game Pass this year, but that's. If you had said you played Skyrim on the Switch, I would have given it to you because it technically came out this year. Yeah. No, I, well, I played I played about an hour of Skyrim on on the Switch, on PlayStation VR. No, nope. but it, it was before Christmas that like, came of last year. Yeah, it, it came out. But there's a there's a RPG called The Chronicles of Nanya, N Y A N Y A, um, and it's basically. Uh, it's about ca- it's cats, yes. but they're it's nice. Um, nice. It's, it's a sw- sweet style JRP style game about cats, brutal massacres, cuteness, racism, and social issues, friendship, sinister thoughts, hilarity, and Nazi furniture is in what is the description of the game. It's exactly uh, what I think of when I think of cats. And s- some some <laughs> of the some of the actual jokes that were in it were really funny. Uh, so. I, I could. I really did enjoy it, but it was like, see, I, sounds like Cat Quest. That, yeah, that came out this year, didn't it? It's it's uh, there's yeah. it's uh, all the reviews so far. Uh, it's like, mainly positive in Steam. Um, hmm. cool. What was it called again, mate? Just so I can add it to my list. Uh, the Chronicles of Nanya. N Y N Y A N Y A. I probably butchered the name, but uh, it's like yeah, like cat yeah. Yeah. Cool man. A lot but, of Chronicles um, games. Like, there's like a ninja there cat is. as the picture in the front. I like how they type in the Chronicles of N, and it's the third game down, but the second game is Out of the Park Baseball 19. <laughs> how do you get that with the Chronicles of N? Exactly the same. It's cats and baseball bats playing baseball. Oh, yeah, no, I've seen this one. There's like a ninja cat, there's an Aerith looking cat. Okay, yeah, I know, I could definitely get that. It's only 19 bucks, too. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was 50% off on the autumn sale. Well, guess we're gonna have to wait for the Christmas sale for first on Steam. Yeah, it says it's only about twin. Says on the thing, he's only about twenty hours to fully explore. That's it's boy. That Steam sale that started since you know while we've been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy all these games now on the Steam sale that is inevitably going on at this moment. But now, so uh, that that's that's my vote because it's the only one I've played. It's better, it, it's, you had something. No, we, we, I had trying... something. I was, that's what I, was, I don't know if you saw me earlier. I was just busy scrolling through my <laughs> Steam going, where the fuck are I You're going through your Steam games going, <laughs> sort by recent, just scrolling down, just like, fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. That was me at the beginning of this. That, I've, since, I've since grabbed a bunch of stuff, so we're good there. Um, now, we're on to action adventure. Which I believe we all are pretty solid in. I think I think this is the ca- the loaded category of this year. Yeah. If I were if I were to hazard a guess. Yeah, it's one of the loaded ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll go first because I haven't been first yet, and this is easy for me. Uh, Marvel Spider Man for me. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Second did so. Third did. <laughs> not. I have <gasps> not played it. I I will be the dissenting opinion on this one. Um, for me anyway, because uh, there's 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 like I say, there's lots of open world games, and I'll, I'll get distracted, and I'll jump to something else, I'll jump to something else, and something else, and I very rarely complete any game 100. percent I'm not a, I don't I don't have the time, um, mm. because of the amount of games I've got and the amount of backlog I've got, I've just, uh, and then when I'm when I am streaming, it's just, uh, Ninety percent of the time, it's multiplayer, so it's uh, uh, playing with other people. So playing this game, I didn't feel what you know because a lot of the single player, you know, it didn't feel grindy at all. You could level up and rank up, and I pretty much, I think I'm, I, I'm about eighty, I'm at ninety-seven percent fully completed of the game. Wow, nice. there's only there's only uh, a few side quests to do. 
uh, before you, get, you unlock again. And I think it's one, it's one of those games you could, it just felt right. Even even the, you know, everyone goes back to the oh, Spider-Man 2, the, the web mechanics. And it did, it did feel a bit, at the very beginning, it did feel a bit weird. But once you got used to it, it was just phenomenal. Well, the re- the, I, I think it worked very well because not every place you could grapple onto unless you're in sort of like a certain angle for it, mm-hmm. which worked. It made sense rather than just flinging him up into the air and, oh, look, he's flying by buildings, but he's not hooked onto anything. What's going on? Is he hooked onto a cloud? You know, yeah. it, it made more sense <laughs> in this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was just, I think it was just tricky at the beginning for me, but, uh, and I'm not really a fan of QTE uh, events, but it, it wasn't too bad for me that, that way either. There, but there, there is an actual option just to turn them off completely. So you just, as soon as I went into them, I think it just turns them off and you, it would just, you know, you get the full cutscene. Um, so there, there's that as well. But uh, I really enjoyed it. No, yeah, super, the, super. the story to this yep. was very good. I mean, you know, you're looking at the Sinister Six, and it was it was a case of when you when we saw the E3 trailer and the, the reveal sort of thing of the one person left when you saw yeah. sight of like, oh, it's, oh, it's you, oh, it's you. Now I don't know about you guys, but there was a certain point in the game where you started to trying to piece it together and go, I think it's him, I think it's him, because there's clues thrown at you early on who that sixth member is. And then when the reveal happens, it's, oh, I was right. Yeah, I, I, I figured it out from the first trailer. Not <laughs> 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 like, there's only one missing, uh, really, that, that it can be. And I think they did. This game could have gone so wrong. It, it Like Insomniac have got a great track uh pedigree for this con you know for, for open world and stuff it, it, they have but comic book games can just get muddled you know the story can go off on all sorts of tangents i think they nailed the story here it was nice to see an older spider-man you know and you know not at school you know and he's, he's obviously gone the other way with you know him and mj have, have been together and not together and their relationship's quite complicated and quite interesting rather than just being the cookie cutter thing they could have thrown at the game uh, and miles being in there as well is really quite interesting and and i just think that enough of those characters are sprinkled in there and and spider-man's like batman for me you know that he's got in in just in that one hero he's got such a wide range of villains and some of the best villains you'll get in a comic book and and i just think they did such a great job uh with the whole thing i thought it was it, it played well it looked brilliant the story was ace and even though there's a ton of side stuff to do and pick up different things, it never felt like it got too repetitive. And, you know, you could have a, you could mop up a bit while you're doing it, but you didn't have to, you know, you know, you could take your time and do things the way you wanted to do them. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a superb game. Yeah, it's yeah. like in, in certain areas, it wasn't always the same side stuff like you would get in a Ubisoft game, for example. Hmm. And so the, the missions were slightly differing, whereas you have to like take take down a couple a convoy, but it wasn't in every single area, which was nice. It felt felt refreshing mm. rather than just okay, we've got to do it again. This one, but the combat felt fun. Like the combat increase, like as you level up, you, you know, you get more and more unlock abilities and all the rest of it, and the combat just gets mental and but, but brilliant at the same time. You know, and you, yeah, the enemies get more and they get harder, but you unlock abilities to take them down in one hit or local counter attacks and stuff like that you know it, it just got better you know it never and, and it stopped the combat being monotonous as well i just think they nailed it yeah it's like was it was it shadow of mordor is that the newest one newest one shadow of war out, shadow mm-hmm. of war mm-hmm. i just gave up with that i have it halfway through just i just became so grindy and uh, i couldn't be arsed with it it's just oh, i'm done with that but this one, Spider Man was just, oh, yeah, let's go, let's be more. Just trying to think, was there anything else about the Spider Man bit? I mean, the, it, it did feel like a Marvel film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you had the, unfortunately, now it's going to, you know, 
it has to stop now, unfortunately. But do you understand know, Lane? Obligatory cameo was in there, and you've got the two Marvel bits at the end of the credits. Yeah, you got to understand Lee, and I, I, I loved the like the first thing I did. Now I was swinging through first, like and everyone was doing it, finding Avengers Tower, getting a photo taken on Avengers Tower, and then finding Doctor Strange's gaff, and like and like crawling over the the big window, the eye and stuff, and it was that was just, and it was a very nice representation. I've never yeah, got but, shouted at for that. It's like, it was, oh, spoilers. It's like, it, everybody knew the Avengers Tower was in it. Yeah, it was, it was just spoiler. very, very, very cool. Very, very cool. And I love the way you could drop on the street and like, hey, Spidey, give me a high five. And also, Big would just shout at you and whatever else. And it was yeah, super cool. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed and, it. And of course, you got the um, J- Jameson. Jenna Jameson with his radio James. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Spider Man's a <laughs> curse. <laughs> Okay, uh, James. Got it. Okay, I can I can actually it's talk Spider Man, is it? Yeah. <laughs> just downloading it now. I just I haven't <laughs> played it. Um, the problem is, is I looked at it. I came from the different angles. That Spider Man for me is is my favorite superhero, hands down. And as much hype was behind this game, I was very worried about it, and I did not want to buy it and play it and be thoroughly disappointed. Yeah. Instead, I watched people let's play through it. Got to enjoy all of it, and then also because it's not my kind of game. Like, platforming, quick time events, having to do side missions to get gear and, like, level up stuff and time trials, that is that is definitely not me. So I was more happy to watch it and almost treat it like a Spider-Man movie that is actually very good. Cool. <laughs> so I appreciate it. But no, it is not Spider-Man for me. I'm stretching this category. This is This is my one that I stretched in. And and I will and I will justify it in a sec. It is BattleTech for PC. The strategy game came out was produced by Paradox Interactive. Action adventure strategy game. Yeah. Well, there's act. Well, and there's this is this is the reason why I'm going to say it's action adventure because of the DLC that they came out with. They have created the entire BattleTech universe, the entire universe, millions of like thousands of planets. And you can create a mercenary squad and travel to every single one of them doing jobs, creating stuff, leveling up your gear, buying new mechs, changing the political landscapes of it. And to me, that's a bit of an adventure game. The fact that you can now go into the entire Battletech universe and play as your own mercenary company and explore and do whatever the fuck you want in it. You don't have to do the main story campaign. Also, where else are we going to stick a real-time strategy game in anywhere? <laughs> oh, wow. Good point. <laughs> yeah. So it's called Flashpoint. And they also, the other thing, too, is that there is a mod that came out because it is a 100% moddable game that you can put in that let you play it at the beginning. And you can go anywhere, choose a side, choose alliances as you rank up faction rep. It makes other people hate you more. It's it's very interesting. It, it's kind of taking, you know, we all, Battletech has been around forever since like the inception of video games and it's nice for them to have this homage and stuff to it but also to like take it to the nines uh and that's where i i am kind of on that one like i said i stretched it very thin but then again i'm not a big action adventure guy and i was not going to put destiny 2 forsaken dlc in here (laughs) i could have said rimworld too but rimworld is indie but that's where i went with that um so hmm. now we're going to talk about our biggest disappointments. Yeah. The biggest stinkers of the year. Red Dead Redemption 2. Ooh. No, I'm really? joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that was leading to the one in it. Um I'll get, it's it, it's a game I haven't played. I'm going to go for um and it's Fallout 76. Okay. I I because... yeah. <laughs> I had, it was one I'd like. I, I was going to get it. I was going to, you know, because I, I liked Fallout, but I was, I always felt that game was kind of missing an online hub, an online community, and stuff. It would have made a great open world RPG, um, and like an MMO kind of. But um, when I, then when I started seeing how the game was developing and started seeing what was happening to it, and and it was just like, Ugh. 
and and then the, the beta as well was just it wasn't really a beta it's a final game and yeah it just it was absolute dog shit so <laughs> biggest disappointment and, I, and i'm disappointed even though i haven't played it you know because i was like I, I was looking forward to to this game coming out this time of the year and i was thinking you know i'd have Put a, put a bit into Red Dead. I'll put a bit into you know. I'll have like also give forward to just putting time into it as my go to. Like uh, that could become the panic cleanser. Then you know, jump into that and a little bit of MMO stuff and play with friends and all the rest of it. But yeah, you know, it's obviously not to be. But luckily, I didn't order the ultimate edition with the bag. You know. <laughs> with a big bag, yeah. <laughs> so our podcast for last year, uh, last year, last week, where we talk about wait, wait, the, the great <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, last week. Or whatever. It's see our podcast yeah. <laughs> with, with John on it, where we talk about the great canvas shortage of 2018. Uh, it's the great canvas shortage of 2018 that happened. Because don't forget, we're live currently on the 14th of December. Yes, live. <laughs> we're, we're reading your chat. We're, we're we're giving our opinions first before we let you talk about you or respond to yours. It's very important. By the way, thank you for all those cheers and follows. And hosts and subscribes and extra Didn't... life donations if you're still doing that. <laughs> like yeah. I don't I don't think there's been a ton of mega disappointing games this year. There's ones that I wish could have been a little bit better, but um but that just stuns out head you, and you that... have to wait for the steaming pile of shit that I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for it. Metal Gear Survive. Ooh. Oh yes. Oh yeah, that is Let's take, oh. yeah, right? And I've played this game too, so I have firsthand experience oh. of it. Let's let's take a shitty, let's try and get involved on like the survival aspect games. But let's throw a Metal Gear on it to try and sell it. Make the story about being in an alternate reality future, not future. And just keep dragging Haido Kojima's name through the mud even more. Let's let's make Metal Gear the property that we'll just slap on everything that we don't have a name for, just so we can try and sell more copies of a game. Also, there's multiplayer, but there's not really multiplayer. Also, you have to spend money to buy a second character slot. Remember that? Five yep. bucks you had for a second character slot. That's, Metal, that's, Metal Gear that's Survive, different. steaming pile of shit. And I'm not even talking, like, did Shadow of War even come out this year, too? No, it was last year, wasn't it? Because it was this year they decided to take the microtransactions away and have to re uh, yeah, that was, rejig that was... it for the grinding on it. So you didn't have to yeah, go, no. oh, this is grinding far too much. I'll buy out my way out of it instead. Yeah, no, it's 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 Metal Gear Survive. Do you reckon a, a Death Stranding, they'll kill someone called Konami? <laughs> Probably, and you probably <laughs> kill Hado Kojima too because he's like sick and twisted enough to throw himself into his own games and do that. But yeah, no, that's it's just like just looking at Konami and just being like, how did you think this was ever a good idea? And then just realizing that the entire idea, the whole reason why Metal Gear is even involved in it, is just so it they, like they can do it because they here it's a Metal Gear game that has. It has no Metal Gears. There's no Metal Gears. It just makes no sense. You get sucked up through a wormhole. In the beginning of the game, you get sucked up in a wormhole. The base didn't get blown up by FOX. You get sucked up in a wormhole and sent to an alternate dimension with all of the other soldiers that have now become crystalline zombies. That is the premise of the game. Okay. Uh, it's even the design of the zombies was it just had little like little crystals for heads. Is that right? Which is the uh, weak spot. Uh, just conveniently. But it just it looked so shit. Yeah. And I played it too. Metal Gear Survive. It's a piece of shit. How much did you spend? But were ten, you looking forward bucks. to it? Did you what was it? I looking forward to it? I'm a masochist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Like I knew it was bad, <laughs> and I just like it's like I I need to see. It was like one of those things where like, you know, I have I've been a big proponent of the Metal Gear games. I have been a huge fan of them. 
literally the first game that I was bought and my dad got the PlayStation 2 when it came out and he got us the bundle with it had Forza or not Forza it had a term uh, Gran Turismo A aspect in it and so we had that and he didn't know what game to, and that was the game for my brother but he didn't know what to get me so he bought Metal Gear Solid 2 and he, he bought it because he recognized the words tactical espionage action because he re read a lot of Tom Clancy books. Now, he bought us this, but we never got a memory card. So I literally played the tanker level hundreds of times before we actually went out and bought a memory card. So I didn't know there was more of the game beyond that. I got really good at the tanker level. <laughs> so, like, it was one of those things, like, they've killed my franchise They've 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 run it through the ground. I need to see what they're gonna do with it. And then I watched it and I'm like, yeah, no, it's 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 I just I it was like I needed the final nail in the coffin. And it was closure. Middle Gear Survival Survival or whatever survive, whatever the piece of shit it is. It is closure for me. It was paying ten dollars for closure. <laughs> well the my most disappointing game. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it at first. I bought it when it came out, and then you, you look at it and go, okay, so there's not enough modes in there. should have been cheaper. The online of trying to get other people to join you is crap. The They named a, an event after a WWE pay-per-view that's been going on for 31 years, and they didn't notice that they could have been copyrighted against. And then the final nail in the coffin was they decided to put microtransactions into the loot boxes after all. And yes, if you haven't already guessed, it is on Rush, uh, my disappointing game of the year. Because even though I platinumed it, you know, for the, for, the, for the first part, I really enjoyed playing that game. And then it just suddenly hit a cliff of how crap can it just suddenly go and just went <laughs> straight down. Mm. And it sucks because there's such potential in that game. There really is such potential in that game for a fun, for a fun racer. Even though they don't class it as a racer, they class it more like Overwatch, but with cars. Yeah. And it's big. with all the stuff that they said they were doing. There's no new modes that I've heard from, that I've seen on Twitter that they were doing. They were just like different season parts, seasonal events. So it is like Overwatch. There's loot yeah. boxes, there's skins for cars, and there's no new modes. It's just the same things <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, Did pretty much. Did nice. you trade it in? Hmm? Did you trade it in? No, I just left it. I'm just like, it's going to gather dust. It's just going to sit down. It's, just... it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a coaster now. Yeah. Mm, it's propping up his PC table. It's <laughs> free next month on PlayStation Plus. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they just got loot boxes so they can do that. I can play a game with you then, Lord. <laughs> no. <laughs> You'd have to wait until January to do that because he's still not playing games that have loot boxes in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Almost done. Almost done. About two more weeks. Is there anything you're looking forward to getting into next week, next year, like when you can play those games? See, I, w I would say Odyssey, but mm. it would ha I would have to have my mindset changed from when we was at EGX and I played that for about five minutes. And I'm like, yeah, this, unless the part I played was boring. Yeah. I mean, Assassin's so far, Creed any other ones that have loot boxes. Good, in it. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is fun. And to be honest, I haven't, like, I've probably got 15, 20 hours into it. I haven't had any, like, rub up against the loot boxes. And mm. what they've also done, apparently, they've also, with their latest DLCs and stuff, they increased mastery ranks so that, like, once you hit max level, you can go beyond that and master the skills on top of what you're doing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've it's... never run up against a loot box problem with that game. It seemed like what they should have done with Shadow of War, where, like, loot boxes are cool and stuff, but, like, it's it's nowhere near, like, the equipment you find by killing dudes are just as good, if not better. Yeah, because what I did hear, though, and I don't know how true this is, because it's, you know, Jim Sterling was all about this. This case of you get to a certain point and the levels just become a real grind to get. And that's when you can, you can look at the, the extra coins you can buy to 
level yourself up quicker so you can get to the end game quicker there's there's like a five yeah. there's like a five dollar thing that you can buy that just doubles the xp you yeah. get for the entirety of the game and to, to me it just sounds like a pointless that. exercise you know just just adjust it so you can have decent xp and just let people play it i can tell you that i spent 35 dollars on the game so i got it for cheaper than normal so i spent the five dollars because i was like i'm still getting it for less than retail is this going to make the game more enjoyable for me? Sure. And that was it. That's the only extra money I've ever sunk into it. Yeah. See, I'll, I'll, I'll probably get it next year. I will probably get it next year because I'm you know, still going through the, the series of Assassin's Creed. And <laughs> by this time, <laughs> maybe on the brothers. <laughs> See, orange, oranges orange. are loved. I did like that. that was, it, was, it was good. Dougie, what's your disappointment, right? Um, well, I'm streaming wise, gaming wise, I've always been a console person. So please take this into consideration, saying that I've I've got all, all my games that I've got on Steam. I've got like a it's a it's 144, so it's obviously not to you guys as <laughs> <laughs> and you watching. It's a fish number. Gotta get but, those numbers uh, up, man. Gotta pump those numbers I, I, up. I, I know. <laughs> Numbers. Mainly because I, I do, I do as many consoles that I play off of, and always, I've always been sort of a console gamer, so I'm kind of new. Double dipping, double dipping. Yeah, <laughs> new to Steam. It's terrible advice, but but, but I've, I've been a fan of Battle Royale since PUBG, uh, H1Z1 the the, and there was a Battle Royale game called Islands and Nine that came out, uh, and this is the only game that I've refunded within the two hour period. Of uh, the Steam, uh, wow! God, it must have been bad. Yeah, it, it's it's the I think they tried. It, it came out in early access, and it tried to be before Call of Duty Blackout came out. So it it, it kind of felt like a COD game, but it was just insane. Uh, the way your your deaths were just it just didn't it just didn't work for me. It just um for whatever reason i just i just thought it was just shit uh, it, it was it was a battle royale style uh battle royale game and and the, the bit at the beginning was quite cool because the the lobby area you could you could shoot one another and it would be like a like a practice area but it was uh like call of duty style so it was it was fast fast killing and stuff but i don't know why it just it felt more like you know call it call of duty but the not the the say the boots on the ground one it was more the the in the it was infinity warfare or advanced warfare style jump around like a fucking lunatic and yeah. bounce all over everything and that style style so i'm just nah not for me thanks very much mm. uh refund so this so now... was... on you go no, I, I, it's, I, I, I just don't like battle royale games personally. Uh, see, see charity stream for, for, uh, for, for, for my opinions on Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. The, the, the deleting it on stream, watching having everybody watch me uninstall it from my computer. Yes. Uh, so I guess that leaves us now to honorable mentions. Uh, we can, I think all of us can list up to two honorable mentions now. And this is going to mm -hmm. be anything that made us happy this year in gaming. Anything. It doesn't have to be tied to a game that came out this year. If it is, great. But anything anything they want. Two good, two good things. Two positive things. After talking about those steaming piles of shit. Yakuza 0 and Detroit Become Human. Yep. Through my uh, mentions. Because, you know, Yakuza 0, very silly in places for the side stuff, like trying to sneakily buy a porn mag for a kid who doesn't know it's a porn mag. Yeah. The the getting the kid getting mugged for a game, and then the mugger getting mugged, 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 and then it finds out it's his dad. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You've got all these silly, these little bits of silly stuff in the Yakuza. Mr. Libido. And, Yep, Miss Libido as well, yes. Just dancing around in his pants right in front of you. <laughs> randomly. And of course, you know, you've got Majima. Yeah. Just, just Majima. Majima. So, 
And you've, so you've got all this silliness. You've got all this stuff here, including the arcades and all this. And then you've got the story, which goes very serious very quickly. And it's that nice balance. It really is that nice balance. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Detroit Human, where hashtag save the fish. Kill the fish. I'm about, I'm going to play that. I've got it my rental game, so don't put spoilers in. <laughs> Please. I'm not, that's all I'm going to say. Dougie, Dougie, <laughs> there's like 12 different endings to the game. All right. Yeah. It's a trip. I've, I've, I've seen Vicky, Vicky stream it, and I think I saw you. Did you stream it, Lard? Did you? Some of you. Well, there was no commentary. Was that? Was that you? No, that was. Did you? Actually, yes, that was me. Yes, that was. But yes. I, I was. It was. It wasn't really the story bits. It was more. You were running places for the both of them. So I, I, as soon as it started story thingy wise, I, I kind of went and scooted off. But uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to Detroit. I'm going to have to mm -hmm. cut into here a second, so we're going to have to edit this bit out, James, because it sounds like my food's ready, so I'm just going to cut my camera off a second, grab it, and then come back up. Okay. So, we're, so we're just going to... Dun, 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 edit point back in a few minutes. <laughs> you just go fast, please. Yeah, stretch it out. We're almost done. <clears throat> a couple of minutes. I almost did Yakuza Zero as my adventure game of the year. That guy's fucking nice. I still haven't finished it though. Um, it's I'm the same way. Like it's it, the problem is that it's just oh I could do this. I got to run here. Oh this is cool. Oh this is cool. What yeah. was I doing? <laughs> and then you realize you could do like the the mini games with like the in, expanding your property empire and all that sort of stuff and and that just and the hostess club and oh uh, the hostess club. It's so funny. That's so, it's it's like the, the greatest soap operas and I, I don't watch that stuff on TV but. It's one of the best things I've ever watched. Like I just love the story. It's so fucking batshit crazy. It's, it's ace. Is that is that the one that's free next month or this month? Um, it's already. Is it? Yes, it was it? already free. No. Whammy, I think, was free. Is it Whammy, Whammy, or whatever. Yeah. I've, yeah, I think but... I've downloaded it, but I haven't. Yeah, I, I, haven't... I don't know. I think. Do you know? I think I'm not sure. Zero might have been free. You know, I can't remember now. Kiwami was definitely. Yakuza Zero is only twenty dollars on Steam. Mm. It's well worth the twenty bucks. <laughs> See, I'm playing yeah. them as they come out on PC because it just makes sense for me. Okay. But also, just like the remasters, how they're like they're not only just graphically doing them, but they're bringing like they did it with Kwame One. They just kind of remastered it, and then they brought the fighting style. But now they're bringing all the rest of them into the new engine that they created. Yeah. So it's like they're bringing them forward, and they're not just like making it look pretty. They're like re, -re I guess it'd be reimaginings. Yeah. No, I'm looking yeah. forward to getting back to that game. Uh, quite a few games. I'm just thinking, um, like Sega is fucking knocking it out of the park with some of the shit that they're doing. Oh, totally. Football Manager is a Sega property. Oh, uh, just while we're off on Football Manager, as another tangent, have you played? I don't know if you've got a Switch, James, but the. There's like a touch version on the Switch, which looks pretty good because I would play that all the time. I, I haven't yet. I have it because they give you the touch version for free when you buy Football Manager 19. I have I the know. touch version. Yeah. So do you get so if you buy that on PC, I'm assuming that you don't. You only get it on PC then, don't you? I, I suppose. don't know. I think there there might be a way for me to connect it, but I have the touch version on PC. I just mm -hmm. I, there might be a way for me to connect it to my Switch. If there is, I'll let you know. Okay, yeah, do that, mate, because, yeah, no, I, I want to buy it, but I know it's a massive time sink, and the Switch would be handy for that, because while I'm watching TV or films or whatever, yeah, that, that's just on them. I, I bought it on PC because I went in and I used the data, database editor, and I edited the database and added Tig Whippies FC into the into the yeah. uh, the game, which I'm Because you lot, I can't, I can't remember the last time, I think the last show I listened, which I think was the last one that's on the, the audio feed, where... You'd put like you just started the new season. You put the old team into the new season. So like you had one in the Premier League, which was your old team, and then you started the game with a new team. Yep. And like, that's that's a wicked feature. That is. Yeah, because what I did is uh, I I'd taken Corby Town through nine seasons from ten. It was ten seasons. I'd taken them from where they were to being top of the Premier League. Then I'd saved that database, exported the database, went into the editor, added Tig Whippy's FC. And then started playing up them from where Corbyton started to to meet them in the court in in the uh, prem, and I never got there. I got five seasons into that, but like Corbyton was like Champions League winners three three out of the five years I played, 
Whoa. And they won the Prem like two years. <clears throat> I, they had a lot. I, I gave them all the players I had from there was their best players weren't any older than 26. Wow. Nice. And then like, I think like the one, like when they sold people, they like, so were selling for like 162 million pounds. So they could just buy whoever Jeez. they wanted. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'll have to get. I'll have to pick it up, man. I, I spent hundreds and hundreds of well, thousands of hours, God knows, on um, Championship Manager back in the late nineties, ninety seven, ninety eight season was just wicked. Uh, that game, Idos made it back in the day, um, but it was. I, I've keep meaning. I get on DOS box on my MacBook, and it's got all. It's got like you know Klinsmann and Maradona, and you know all these players at the end of their careers, and then when they retire, they come back as the younger players. Yeah, with the, same the Regents. Stuff. Yeah, it's 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 ace. It really is fun. The 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 way it has it now is if you click it, if you click on a thing. So you, I I got a league download that lets me go all the way down to the counties league in English football. Mm. It's all the way down to the tenth league, tenth league in the triangle. And then what you can do is a lot of them have like the things like Corby Town has their actual team, mm -hmm. like the, the actual players statted out in the game. But you can click add to add to play add to teams and what it'll do is it'll regen all the rest of the teams that don't have enough players to, to bring them up to par so you can get some awesome regens off the start of the game so oh, nice. the corby town fc is an entirely regen team which i like doing because i'm like it's it's entirely regen so we don't have to worry about and i'm never going to sign anybody but regens so i don't have mm -hmm. to think about like oh i've got christian erickson or you know i'm going to sign you know, Christian Bale or, you know, Ronaldo. <laughs> I did know in Corby Town FC, I signed Ronaldo as the head of my youth, as the head of my under 23s coach. Oh, cool. And then he left to like go coach Atletico Madrid. But I had him for a oh, year coaching my under 23s. Oh, that's sweet. That's wicked. <laughs> he had just retired and I was like, hey, we're just made to the Premier League. But uh, I want to, <laughs> he's like, I want this much money. I'm like, sure. <laughs> oh man! It's just crazy the stuff you can do, and I I love it. I love the workshop for it on Steam too, because people are just out of fucking control with it. Like if I'm looking at the workshop right now, like so they 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 do tactics and stuff like that. But somebody and they did this for FM eighteen, and it was right at the end of it. Somebody created the ninety the the nineteen ninety five to nineteen ninety six season. Oh, wicked. All the players across all the leagues. So you've got what, Manchester the United. Whole world. Yeah. All statted. Wow. So you can play like the 95 oh, 96 that. database <laughs> in Football Manager. It's just. I'm totally it. Yeah. And it's, it's just nuts. It just. And there's just. There's constantly coming out with stuff. Like, let me just see, like, the most subscribed thing, too, right? I'm just looking at, like, you know. Guys do wonder kids. They have tactics. So like Manchester, they have like the you know they have Pep Guardiola's tactic on here. People have watched the games and have broken it down so you can play that tactic if you want. Yeah. 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 Leg okay. Here we go. The Legends database. Uh, they have an entire like Legends database here of a hundred hundred fifty nine <laughs> players. Ronaldo, Cantu, Shaq, Casillas, Didi, Dino Zoloff, Ensign. Drogba, you know, all of these guys. Just Paul Scholes, Pepe, yeah. Pele, Ronaldinho. That's they, nice. Yeah, so I I my 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 way to football manager was a very strange trip. I never thought I would enjoy this kind of a game, and now it's obviously my favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Because I started playing, I originally started watching the Premier League. Then I bought FIFA, and I liked playing career mode in FIFA. But I liked managing the team rather than playing FIFA. And then I started watching Football Manager videos, and I like I'll try Football Manager out. And I'm like, this is what I've wanted, and I've never bought a FIFA game since because Football Manager is exactly <laughs> what I want to do. <laughs> That's super, super. I am overdue. I am. Yeah, you know, I used to buy it every year. 2014, I stopped after that year because I thought I haven't played it enough. But then obviously I realised I've played 72 hours, which is more than enough to justify uh, <laughs> 30 quid. Um, 
but yeah, I've just got I've not picked it up since. And then like and it was on the Vita, and I'm um, denied about it. And I played them on the phone and different things like that. So I'm like, you know, it's probably time to jump back in on PC. The switch, yeah. the switch may be a, the, the, a good place to get it. I I know Doctor Benji, who's like one of the big fo- football manager YouTubers did a review of it on the switch and he said it, it's fun it's good it, like if you want it football manager on the go it's obviously the best way to do it all right so james cut back in this is where we're going to cut back in will already did his thing <laughs> that's where i'm going to put the advertisement for what i don't know <laughs> for the store no <laughs> if you guys want watch the band of gamers podcast listen to it live and you could hear wonderful things about music games bollocks and also game of the year coming up soon that's a band of gamers podcast found on any of your podcast listening devices superb yeah we'll just stick that right in there <laughs> boom add <laughs> So yeah, so they're, they're my mentions, Yakuza Zero and Detroit Become Human. Ooh, who wants to go next? Who has something nice they want to say about what they did? Anything that they did or video games this year in general? <laughs> the enthusiasm. I'll go. It's it's easy. It's easy. It, for me. It's 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 No Man's Sky. <clears throat> The rework that they've done in that game is just absolutely amazing. What they've done to rebuild that game, bring it up to par, bring it up to snuff. They could have taken the money and run, but they left it. They kept going on it. They kept working on it. And they built a game that is both interesting, engaging, and fun. And they're still developing content for it. Um, I went back to it for a little while. I had a ton of fun with it. The fact that you can see there was other major streamers that spent major time on that game coming back to it after it being as fucked up as it was, it says something about it. And the fact that they've they've really developed it and really brought it to being something interesting. And then also not having to have you pay, if you've already bought the game, you didn't have to pay for anything else. Like they get, everything came to you. They're not asking, they're not making DLC. There is no loot boxes. It's... They've added multiplayer. You have multiplayer now in this game. You can play with your friends. You can explore the galaxy. They they made they, there's storylines in it, but there's also not. There's a way to hack out and get infinite money, and that they haven't they haven't fixed yet. That I may or may not have done. <laughs> <laughs> No Man's Sky is very good game. They've really done great things to it. They've really upped the ante with it, and I'm really excited for what they've done. Also, good job at major at like studios for not fucking up good games. Like first party, st- like good job. How about Sony, like for not fucking up a lot of their first party titles? Yeah, yeah, like. Just good, just just letting them do their job. Good, good job, Sony, for like letting your teams just do what they do what they do and create some pretty awesome games this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Yep, and they also buckled to the pressure with. Uh... Yeah, they finally are going to let it happen. Uh, play, 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 play anywhere and play with other consoles or PCs. It's... So we'll play together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we'll all go down together. <laughs> See, I know some people um, aren't really fussed about the cross-play stuff, but yeah. you know what? It's, it's a nice thing because it means it, it's getting closer to inclusion rather than bloody console wars and, you know, people arguing because of a console. Yeah, Whereas yeah. cross-play, you have your friends who, who can choose to play different, buy different ones and play together. Until Microsoft kill it next generation, and then they're like, "Nah, we're good, man. We're good. <laughs> Screw <Yep>. you, Sony. <laughs> Taking the toys away. No, I don't think they would do that, really. But um, yeah, I've got a couple of honourable mentions. I would say 
uh, first of all, for Pokemon, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee. I, I think they've done a fantastic job with that game. It's entry level Pokemon for all the kids who are genuinely kids and are playing Pokemon Go, but never played a Pokemon game. And, and I think it's just, you know, taking away the battle mechanics for like actually weakening Pokemon, catching them, just chucking a Pokeball at them. It works really well. The game's a ton of fun. Uh, I'm enjoying it immensely. I think it's, it's just again improving on that formula to get a whole new generation of kids into play that game it's, it's, uh, it's yeah. almost it's almost like they've made a game that adults who played the game as kids can now play with their kids to show them how much fun they had playing that game absolutely it's almost like they're yeah. generationally like it's only been what 25 years yeah yeah, yeah. since Say only <laughs> gen one <laughs> since yeah what was it red and blue um but it does feel it does feel a bit like Pokemon Yellow, um, and it's 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 got a lot. Uh, it's still a lot of fun, even with just those you know the the base Pokemon uh, from the Kanto region. It, it does uh, a lot. It just does it all well. It's really polished. It's really good fun. It, the inclusion of the little two player option, like the local co op, is quite good. Even if it's just helping you catch a Pokemon, you know, encourages like a little Pokemon to play with you, and they'll have enough fun. Uh, doing just that so yeah well well done nintendo it's a, it's a it's a great little game and the second uh one i would say is a way out which was early this year mm-hmm. a very interesting game to play you're probably only going to play it through once but I, I just like the way they did something a little bit different you know only one of you has to buy the game it was only 20 quid you could play across you know cooperative with each other and you had to play the game cooperative in that way and i thought the story was good you know i thought they did a good job of the game uh forget who the developer was now but um but i certainly it's, it would never be game of the year but i think it was it was good for what it was you know and i think you know just doing that something a little bit different was pretty cool yeah because that guy was at the game awards last year wasn't it so fuck the oscars <laughs> <laughs> yeah good game yeah it was all right um i remember trying it with vicky and you then you know we say you don't have to buy the game but you do have to get the demo of it you do have to download yeah, the demo. To download it. yeah it's so, yeah it's, it was a fun couple of sessions really did you finish the story yes yeah yeah because it's a good story it's a, i enjoyed the story i must admit reminds me a lot yeah, of like journey when that came out yeah yeah but with i suppose it's it's more it's, it's not as random whoever you're playing online with right you know, well, you know. so, well, for me, well, I haven't played uh, No Way Out, but Journey was like, I was like a big eye opener because I just streamed it because it was one of those, you know, the free to play PlayStation ones. Yeah. And there was somebody in the chat just chatting away to me and saying, Have you played this before? And I'm like, No, no, no. And it was like until the very end. And they were like, It was nice playing with you. And, I, and then it came up and said, your, your partner was such and such. And I'm like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I didn't even know. It was a. Yeah. It just blew my mind at that time. I was just like, "How the hell?" Because oh, I just, I thought I was just following a, a wee, you know, some random dude or girl yeah. or person. Yeah, non-gender specific. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's always some person. It's never a, a, a NPC. But the thing is, when I tried it, I had free, and I didn't even notice the switch over. So the dro- drop in and drop out was seamless. Hmm. Um, but because it's random, because you don't go and you know purposely find someone in that, that's amazing how you got the person on stream. Yeah. That is pretty cool timing. Yeah. Um, I think uh, from what I, what I gathered from what they said that you know he was he played a hell of a lot, so I think he was also looking for you know himself either on the stream or or, or, or on a, of the you know journey streams. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. Are we time for game of the year, Jen James? Well, Dougie well, has to tell us his honorable mentions. Then we could do game uh, of the year. Point, yeah. Good point. I've I've got kind of two. Uh, well, one is oh, well. The first one I've got is is I've never really like I say I'm more of a shooter person and stuff and the for trying out different games and one game I actually did want to try um, mainly because of because of the. It wasn't really a, a movie tie-in, but there, there, there was tie-ins to it. Uh, it was Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, I've never really, but pl- I remember playing Theme Park. 
you know, long time ago on the on the PlayStation. So I, I did enjoy that, and it's just a, a cool. Uh, you got the music for starters. You got um, Ian Malcolm doing the commentary, uh, Mr. Goldburn, and uh, it's just a pretty cool. Just chill out, and make 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 pens, soup, stop them eating the, you know, the guests. Uh, uh, chill out game. I, I really I really enjoy it. It was just one of those things. And the other honourable mention is it's not really a game. It's more, I think. PlayStation VR is now, even though it had a rocky, 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 rocky road when it first came out, but I think sort of the games that are starting to come out now for it are they're starting yeah. to hit their stride. Um, and so I'll just sort of throwing it just now, uh, sort of my go to one at the moment. I like Firewall Zero Hour, which is basically Rainbow Six Ooh. Siege, but in VR. And, it look good. And, and the community that's I've never had a bad game with, you know, someone, you know, toxic. They've all yeah, kind okay. of, I mean, like, I don't know, maybe because yeah, they've, just they've just spent a lot of money on the VR headset and, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they want to interact and, and play it well. So there's, it was, you know, uh, that one is really good. Plus with uh, that Astro Bot is just not long out and it's been on sale and uh, Beat Saber. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're starting to... Obviously, I'd like to, you know the Beat Saber that's on PC is is different, and um, there's modding and things like that, which would be awesome. But obviously, it's PlayStation and Sony's rules. Uh, I would love that, but uh, yeah, PlayStation VR starting to uh, get some better traction, I think, games wise, yeah. because it used to be experiences, and it was like you paid twenty quid, and you know, t- ten minutes later, you're like, is that it? You know, like the Martian or something like that, you know. Yeah, just like a lap dance. But I mean, it's. <laughs> I'm not that. It's, it's, uh... no, no, that's not in the PlayStation Store. I haven't checked. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't checked. I haven't checked. Sorry. It, it, I, I think, I mean, I, I've played VR now. I mean, if you think how many years this has been at EGX now, well, it's been, what, four years, maybe? It's yes, been, certainly. Been towards, at least three. Yes, it definitely is at least three. But my, I mean, my big issue with it is. With, with EGX, every year it's have to be appointments, have to be appointments yeah. rather than walk in. And with it being as big as it is now, surely that crossover to enough people having it where they don't need to start booking appointments to go go experience it now. Yeah. And I mean, it hit the price point Black Friday. It was one one seventy nine in the UK, wasn't it, with Astro Bart with um, another game. It might be Resident Evil, uh, but you didn't get the move controls with it. It was just the headset and... And I was looking at that thinking, that's a really good price for that. And a lot of Dougie says, man, you know, you've got Beat Saber looks, looks ace. Uh, Moss is really cool. And uh, Astro Bar, the Tetris is meant to be really good. Yeah, I, I played <laughs> the demo. Well. I haven't got the full game, but the demo was awesome. So yeah. I, I think you're right. I think it is hitting that little plateau nerve. Like it's a good price. There's a good library of games for it. Um, and the stuff keeps getting better. So yeah, good shape. I remember a Beat Saber EGX, Rob and Steve uh, trying it, mm. and you've got you've got Rob there go, putting his all into it, going, thinking about jumping, all this, and you have got Steve standing next to him. <laughs> Zen, almost, yeah, almost <laughs> in a Zen state of just. I swear to God, he, if he was uh... in the Matrix for that part, and it was just, just <laughs> so funny to watch both sides. Um, I mean, I remember going up with Rob to see if there's any appointments and, and they were like, oh, none for today, too late. You know, try coming back at lunchtime. And I was in and out, so busy with the whole weekend. And I was gutted, man, because I really wanted to try that Beats Over game, but it wasn't to be. Yeah. I, I, I played it, at the, but it wasn't with the PlayStation VR. It was the it was the Vive. Mm. They had it up at um, the scan desk. Um <laughs> Because they were, oh, they, were, said they, were they, they were they were they were showing off the that yeah something he clipped onto the top of the headset and it was just so it was completely wireless, um, which was which was good. But uh, I think Liam Liam recorded me playing it because I, I went nuts with it. But uh, <laughs> um, I haven't I haven't seen the footage. If you're watching Liam, put it back on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, uh, it's, it is. Uh, I think well, there's rumours as well that they're already starting to do PlayStation VR two, so maybe less wiring, modest, such like and better, maybe the uh, better visuals because obviously if you've got the pro pro, it's better. Whereas I've just got the standard PlayStation four. Yeah, maybe the way to also cut down the motion sickness as well in some games. Mm. Yeah, I, I, to be off here, I've never, I've never had it. So I, I'd, apart from maybe once when I was on the the roller coaster, the Rush of Blood game. Yeah, when, uh, I felt my stomach go, but that was I probably would do that if I was on a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, but, true. Uh, I, I did play. I did go to my friend's house when he he got it first. And there was a, a it was a level where you're on a spaceship and it jumped from an asteroid to an asteroid, but the asteroid was there, so it jumped and then turned while you're in space to land on the side asteroid, and you just hit, you just went. Is <laughs> 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 that can you wash it first before I get shot? Give <laughs> me a barf bag. Uh, yeah. And Super Stardust HD, there's mode in it when you're on a planet and you're moving around to try and take out some aliens flying at you. That made me lurch. Mm. And but I'm surprised Wipeout VR didn't. And then when you play it, you realize why, because you're actually sitting in the cockpit. So it's almost like you're dry you're being in a car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that the, that one bit is so stable that you're you know you can focus on you need to be in your, you, you know it's it, it's sort of like the grounding effect you have for your eyes almost where you can see outside and oh, that side bit's moving but you're not so that that helps I think in 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 making wipeout VR look so good oh yeah well I, I would say, you know driving games like piloting if you had that you know as a mech game or whatever. Those yeah. those types of games where you're sitting down controlling something and you're just looking the those types of games there, but I know the the, the one with the was it kind of like the basketball game one that came out. I mean, think v- Formula One VR. Yeah, well, I I like Dirt Rally and with VR enabled is is um, is awesome. Even though when you when you stick your head out and look at the back <laughs> of the the back of the car is it's only the front of the car that's there the the back of it. <laughs> Drive Club VR. That I was enjoyed, very good. I enjoyed it. I, I wasn't sick of that at all. I felt, I felt great. <laughs> yeah. And Gina, right, when we had it set up for her, um, couldn't see over the dashboard. Oh, bless her. <laughs> Did you lift the bag up that she was in? <laughs> we had to put a couple of precautions up on it for her. Then she sat on it, could see over the dashboard. Oh, man. <laughs> That should get an honorable mention for itself. Yeah. Oh, I went around to a friend's house and they, uh, and he, he had it all set up. He had the steering wheel and the pedals and everything, and then you put the VR headset on. That's awesome. That's cool. Right. Are we now ready for game of the year? I think so. So you're yep. going to get three out of four game yep. of the years. Yep. The only reason being, to be fair, I there's a couple of games I haven't played, so I can't I can't really say what is my game of the year at the minute. But you know, I've I've got to save it. Where can they tune in to find your game of the year? Uh, should you wish to find out my game of the year, you can listen to the Abandoned Gamers podcast, uh, which you just Google it, abogpodcast.com uh, is the website. So yeah, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, all that. Um, yeah. If you if you if you follow us on iTunes, funnily enough. You scroll down to the bottom of the tape and won't play itself. A band of gamers podcast is there if you'd yeah. like that. I noticed there that. I, iTunes algorithm there working out good. So absolutely <laughs> doesn't work the other way around. I checked, but that's fine. <laughs> All right. Sort that out. Yeah. Who wants to give their game of the year first? I mean, mine's pretty obvious. So it probably is mine. But, yeah, because I, 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 I could. I. I <laughs> <laughs> Mine could be summed up in one word. And that is <clears throat> you know it. Boy. Yeah. Because God of War was such an amazing game this year. It you know, great story, great visuals. Combat was really good as well. 
quite meaty and heavy and you know it's quite tactical when you had to change between your you know your axe and the bit that made my uh my head the hair stand up on end and give me goosebumps was i always wondered where the, cha- the blades of olympus were going to be if they were going to be there because of change of scenery yeah and when you get to that point where you have where you go back to your cavern and you see Athena, and you you just have that feeling that it's going to happen. Then when you see Athena, it's like, oh, oh, he's going to get the blades, and then you get you wield them because it gives you the hint at the start where where he's wrapping the bandages around his wrists mm. because where the blades, where the chains were to see them. So you know there was a hint there. It, it's moments like that that put it above games like Spider Man for me because it, it it looks back on the franchise that it was previous generations and adds to it and changes it enough so it freshens up yeah yeah so mine's god of war uh, (laughs) for all of those reasons and also and mainly for me it's the story because yeah it's it's not a story about kratos it it is but it's it isn't it isn't it's it's his redemption story it's his son coming of age it's him trying to be trying to cope with the fact that he's becoming a father to a god, and it's also finding out who his wife really was. And like, it's also a story about grief as well. It, yeah. That's it, the entire story. I mean, it's not just Kratos's grief; it's everyone's grief. Yes. Atreus, his, his, the way that they pen pen that story of his relationship with Atreus is is just beautiful. You know, it's so well written. It's so emotional and. You can see him <laughs> just, you know, struggling with how to like it, the, the the moments where he's like awkwardly touching him or hugging him. It, it, it's super, super well done. I loved the moment. Like I forget where it is. It's after you go back to see Freya and you get back into the boat and Atreus is kind of like pouting and you see like he goes to reach out to touch him and he gets his hand almost over his shoulder and then pulls it back yeah. and you're just like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> like every guy just like sitting there just like. Just, just, just hug the kid. Yeah, just grab him, man. Just hug him. Just yeah. press X to dad. <laughs> <laughs> but it was that moment though where Atreus was becoming the dick yeah. because he didn't know how to deal with it with the the knowledge that he was given, and he, the the kid, the kid played that so well that you got angry and annoyed at him for mm-hmm. acting such a dick. You know, if you if you're just son doing that, you would say stop that shit right now. Except maybe you know, cut the, you would say shit, but you know, <laughs> but well, maybe but. It, it was also good because they could have easily gone the route with. Then once again, it's you know Kratos being who he is, he could have easily just hit the kid, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, essentially he could have done it, but they didn't go there, which I think was a stronger point because it's not as much as like he's also trying to set an example for his son. With the way yeah. he's acting, and mm-hmm. he and he sees all of his faults in his in his son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's trying not to uh, make a second monster that he is. Yeah, yeah. And he's trying. Yeah, he's you know, he's trying to redeem himself and and set a good example. And I I just think the whole Norse myth- mythology setting was was a brilliant idea. You know, just taking it completely away, and and it, it it's so full of lore and just uh, fascinating stuff. And and with it, you know, without I don't want to spoil the ending, but as you when you get to the end and you see the stuff like the markings on the wall and the pictures and all that sort of stuff, and you're like, that's real clever. That's real, real good storytelling. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, and yeah, and, and, and the endings and, and performances endings. too, all around. Like Christopher Judge as as Kratos, just an inspired act choice. Just yeah. the oh, kid yeah. Atreus was really well done. Freya, um. Balder, all of them are really well done. The characters, N- Mjolnir or the the head, yes. Mm. <laughs> like See, the rapport hilarious. between between Kratos and Mjolnir, yeah. is Mimir. that was Mimir. It's yeah, Mimir. Mm-hmm. Mimir. So let me tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> it was just it just no. it felt natural, didn't it? Well, everything it felt was... that like like when you like he'd be telling you a story and you'd get off the boat and he goes ah eh, maybe later then. <laughs> and, it's, and then they would pick up when you got back on the boat and he started telling the story again it, like you're able to get lore and if you just fast traveled you never have that lore so 
Yeah. Yeah, but no, God of War is definitely my game of the year. I struggled with this, um, but and I really had to think about it, but it is a kind of, for me, it's a complete package, and, and it's it's not long, it doesn't have multiplayer, it doesn't have DLC, it doesn't need any of those things. It is beginning to end a single piece, and it's good. Yeah, very, 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 yeah. very good. It's superb. All right, Dougie. I I did finish it. I must admit, I did finish God of War. And it was I was hovering between that one as well. Uh, but for me, even though I've not I've not technically finished the game, uh, Red Dead Two is for me. That's fair. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just okay. Uh, I don't know the scenery. The I know the 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 this long slow build up. It's it's. Uh, that's the full package of the game for me. Even though I've not, like I say, I've not finished it. I'm not, I'm not take away online. No, no. As a single player game. Um, online yeah, technically not. Online. It's not out yet. It's still, yeah, still beta. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're still wondering. It's, yeah, we're it. still wondering how much we can charge to make you grind, uh, to make you pay for it, and all that sort of shit. But uh, as a single player, as a single story. player game, um, and then you know the. The, the, like the story is sort of is sort of focused at the beginning where there's a just sort of the, the hour long maybe two tutorial with the first chapter and then it's then it's branches and opens out and then you, you're kind of left to your own devices if you want to just wander around everywhere or and do anything like you like say rpg games um i'm not that's not my style and you, you were saying our earlier rpg light and this as well it kind of is uh because even mm-hmm. The Witcher didn't take me. I think maybe if I went back and played The Witcher three again, then I would. I <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> You're busy. But the thing is, the first the first time I ever I never played Witcher one. I never played Witcher two. I played Witcher three. It was I, I got I got a loan of it, so I didn't have very much time to play with it. So the first thing was, you know, my first quest was I had to find a. Uh, what was that? Uh, a pot a pot in the, somebody's house. Yeah, oh, you know, and, and, <laughs> yeah, uh, and it, it, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't grab me. Why? Why it grabs a lot of people, but whereas this one seems to be a bit. Uh, but if I maybe if I went back to that now and had another, I was a proper go at it. Yeah, then I would probably appreciate it a lot more. Um. Uh, but even, let's say Red Dead, even though it's light, but all the characters you could just up to and say hello to, and, and you'd get a different voicing back and uh they, they generally all look different uh you know and so it's it feels like a totally immersive world um that i'm thoroughly enjoying playing yeah how how, how far in are you would you say mate like because well i've I mean... played i've played a bit uh, i'm 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 near the end of chapter two but i've been okay. i i haven't like some uh but i've i've spent about six to eight hours just just ambling around the countryside. Side quests uh, and stuff. And... Side quests and things. Me bumping into would, people. Would you agree uh, that the Le- the Lenny drinking section is probably one of the funniest moments in gaming this year? Oh, that, that's wicked. <laughs> we had to we had to play that on stream because it was it was by far my favorite part of that game. It's not like where I am at the point of it. It's just like <laughs> just like from a sequence of events, like from beginning to end, that entire section is just like it's too good. It's yeah, that that that's that scene that like that little quest is I mean, I'm in chapter three and when I first started playing the game, it's like it's so slow, it's so like and it looks stunning, like it is an achievement, it's a phenomenal game. Um but it does it builds up and builds up and builds up and you know, it gets to that point now where like chapters one, chapter two, I was like, Oh, I don't really feel there's no pull to go back and play for me, but when I'm in chapter three and I'm like, I do want to go back and I do want to carry on with the story because the, the amount of work that's going to involve in the character design in the world and stuff, it, it's, it, it's, you really do want, you know, the more you play, the more you get out of it. And all the people that I talk to who are like in chapter six and whatever they're saying, this is now the best, this is my, my favorite rockstar game. This is the game of the year. And it, it, I don't think it would get to game of the year for me, but I, I want to play as much as I can before I, I make any kind of decisions about about anything. But I, I don't think it'll get there. But 
but at the same time, it is a it is a marvel. Like you know, the thing looks it's the best looking game I've seen, um, and there's been some great looking games on PlayStation as in you know um, exclusive this year. This game on the One X is just jaw dropping. It is absolutely stunning, and it's a lot of fun. You know, yes, you have to travel from A to B. You have to you know your horse travel and all the rest of it. But I've got to that point where I've unlocked fast travel and all the rest of it, and it's it just gets. The, 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 the niggles that you have, which are a lot at the beginning, it isn't accessible, I don't think, to the person who's just going to whack 10 hours in and then make a decision. But all that just, you forget it. You know, you just carry on and it, and it just improves as, you know, you get better, your horse gets better, the, the, you get used to the button buttons being multiple layouts for different scenarios and all that sort of stuff. You, you kind of just forget it as you get used to the game. And, and I must admit, it, it is moving up for me uh, the more I play. Yeah, yeah, multiple. Yeah, that was that was that's, you know, like little niggles. You know, like I was trying to, you know, work out what am I what am I doing now? What's the next mission? Oh shit! I've punched the horse. Now he's kicked me off a mountain. You know what I mean? Look at Lucas, just punch the horse. Yeah. Like, my problem is, it was a, a series of unfortunate events where, like, a guy. One of the guys like, hey, you fight the guy. So I fought the guy, fist fight him in the fish. And the guy's like, oh, you did something bad. And I went to go and chase down that guy. And I punched him in front of the marshal. And then the marshal's like, you're a bad guy. So I, I shot the marshal and then jumped on my horse. And so I ran away from, like, the gang. And then there was a train. Wanted. And I got on the train hoping it would get me away. But then, like, you're robbing the train. And I'm like, no. <laughs> this is all a big misunderstanding. This is a big... And now it's like, your, your bounty is $200. Or you need to quest it. And I'm like, but I need to quest in this area. I can't. I can't afford it. Yeah, yeah. That's when you you hold it up in the mountains and put your camp out and just kill animals and stuff. I try and make some money that way. Yeah, it's. it's I think my bounty was five hundred at one point, and that was. It was hard to shift it. It really was. But yeah, good shape, Dougie. Mm. I was wondering if anyone would have it for game of the year. Yeah. Well, I, I suspect it's going to be a lot of people's games of the year. Yeah, have you played it yet? Well, I know you've had a ton of other stuff to get through. So uh, I haven't yet. I have not played it yet. <laughs> it's it's one of those back burner ones that I'll, I'll look at because you know from seeing people play it, it does look really really fun. But it's one of those ones I'm trying to avoid the story for. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame well, you. And it, is Lenny, a time, it is a time sink. The Lenny oh. thing is perfectly fine to talk about. It has no bearing on the story really, besides from just. Getting drunk and being able to yeah. do stupid shit, and thinking everyone looks like you, mate, when you're pissed. <laughs> which is, which is and you brilliant. go, you go into that one room. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I had one. Uh, well, where was? Um, I was just riding along, and then I hear this. Pss, pss, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And there's a a prisoner come up, come up, comes out. Oh yeah. And he's he's chained, so you can either you know leave him or you can shoot the chains to free him so i did that and he went oh thanks very much uh, uh if you want there's i know a place where they do you know if you're wanting some illegal moonshine you can go and he said the place was called aberdeen and that's where, where i am so it's, yeah. oh well, let's go to aberdeen so we head up head up there and then we meet the guy, uh, the, guy <laughs> the lady invites us in and uh i was like oh okay and uh, yeah, uh, would you like? Would you like to come for dinner? So, and it bring, brings out the moonshine, and then you have a few drinks, a few drinks more, and then I woke up. I was in a grave uh, with a body beside me, nice. and uh, and they dropped, they'd taken everything from me, all my money, and I managed to get back in the house, uh, and I, I killed the husband. And I thought, what the fuck are this? <laughs> I just, I just uh, hooked, managed to get my stuff back, hooked, tied the wifey, and flung her in the grave, and then left, <laughs> left her. She's the thing is, she's screaming, "No, it's, I'm not. I don't want to be in with the sister." You know, it's, you know. <laughs> so they thought of all this stuff. This is random shit that could happen. Oh, okay. uh, t I'll tell you what. That's why I love this game because I met the same dude, and it was night time. And I think I just killed a stable owner somewhere. I didn't mean to, but I killed him by mistake. <laughs> but then I'm hot footing it, uh, and I killed the witness. So, so I, was, I was clear. So I legged it, and I'm walking past these bushes, and the dude's in the bushes with the shackles on and that. And he's like, you know, 
and you get the option to kill him or free him. And I'm like, right, I want to free him, but I don't want to accidentally kill him. So as I'm like trying to cycle through and think which weapon's going to be best, and I'm like, and I'm lining the shot up, he gets bored. So he says to me, he says, oh, thanks for nothing, mate, and shuffles off. So he's 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 walking, like, shuffling off away, like, still in manacles, like, still shackled together. And I'm like, what just happened? Have I just missed the side? <laughs> like, and I thought, do I kill him or just see what happens? So I left him to shuffle off, and I thought, I'll see what happens. But there could be a whole different side of that at some point. Yeah. And and that is what's great with it. You know, the, the side quests are completely random, and, and you can – you can do them or not do them, and there are different. I think there's different ramifications for for what you choose to do. So, yeah, yeah, very funny, mate. That you just picked that one. Yeah, well, it's, it's like there's there's one. There's a guy got his leg caught in a bear trap, mm. and uh, you can choose to free him or not. And and I freed him, and he went, "Oh, thanks very much. You're you, you're awesome, type thing." And then you know, sh- and, and then he shuffles away, gets his horse and off. Go, and then I don't know, but two hours later, I'm I'm in a completely different part of the. The map uh, in town, and he's sitting on a bench uh, outside a general store, and he's like, oh, "I was," and he's busy telling the story of how I freed him, to his, <laughs> his mate, and then I walk past him, and he's like, "Oh,", oh, oh. Uh, and uh, he says, "Go in the general store, have anything you want." I was like, "Okay, cheers." Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> the Civil War vet. Oh yeah, give oh, no, uh, him a hug. Yeah. Did you give him a hug? I'll give him a hug. I'll I give him, him a, a hug quick too. Hug. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh the guy, the yeah, the guy. The, <laughs> like I said, I'm just like, I want to be your friend. <laughs> can I be your friend? It's been a long time since I've had a hug. Okay, just don't touch me. Just, <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's full. It's full of that stuff. It is. It's yeah. There's a lot of work going into that. Rockstar game. Has, is very good at world building. Uh, I saw somebody's clip of of what they were doing online. Is like, and it was a GIF, and it was just like, okay, so this is basically uh, Red Dead Online, and he like wakes up, his character wakes up, and he walks out, and he's on top of the like, he's kind of on like a veranda of a building. He hears yeehaw, and he just sees a guy on a horse dragging a naked body of another character behind him on the horse <laughs> through town. And he's like, that's strange. And all of a sudden you hear, bang, and he dies. And it says, you've been killed. And it just like a sniper rifle from the corner building. He's like, ha! Ah! It's like, Red Dead Online. I'm like, that sounds about right. It's it's going to be like a Coen Brothers movie a version of like the yeah. Wild West. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, It's a bit buggy at the moment because everybody seems to be, everybody seems to be falling through the map at the moment. And uh... But like you say, as soon as you spawn in, it's if you're anywhere near somebody, it's just like, oh, you're dead. Yeah. So online's got a way to go. But look, look, look at the state of what GTA Online was when it started to where it is now. Fair enough. I don't want it to go that far. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want flying horses. But shit. Lorian uh, disappears. Yeah. <laughs> You think of this, I I just reminds me of a great quote I saw that said, like, you know, Assassin's Creed 1, we removed the hand crossbow because it wasn't culturally relevant at the time and crossbows didn't become available. So instead we gave him throwing knives. Assassin's Creed Origins. Flaming horse! (laughs) (laughs) Have you no decency, Ubisoft? Oh, wait. Uh, Ubisoft. Yeah. But I think that's it. I think that's our games and various things of the year. What are your thoughts, chat? Tell us. We want to know. We will talk about this next episode. I'm pretty sure Chris will want to get involved on his as well and explain to you all of you guys as well. Guys, thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Fun. And that will be our live, uh, a very Tig Whippy Christmas will be our next episode yes. on the Saturday afternoon. Yep. At two o'clock. Very tickled Christmas. Christmas. Santa. Eggnog <laughs> for all. Except uh, for me, maybe not, because it's, it'll be like like 10 in the morning. No, you can have <laughs> breakfast eggnog. That's cool. I'll, just, I'll do that for Christmas. It's fun. <laughs> James, why are you hammered at like 11 in the morning? I tell Christmas. Because it's Christmas. Christmas. It's Christmas. I'm on holiday. I'm on holiday. <laughs> 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 Gonna deck the hall. 
Who passes so high? La 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 la. Yes, so we'll see you guys all for the holiday episode. It's been a pleasure. Have a good night, morning, whatever time of day it is. Bye bye. Good night.